Hello everybody, this is Fabi from Next Big Rush and today I have a weird but funny story about how I uh, have a 10 bagger which is no longer a 10 bagger which I didn't even notice became a 10 bagger. <laughs> okay, so how does this even work? How is this possible? You may be asking. Well, this is what happened. Here's the backstory to it. So, uh, way back in December of 2008 at the bottom of the market there was a huge uh, M&A arbitrage opportunity which was Gold Canyon was going to be taken over by First Mining Finance which you might have already heard of. Now uh, the, the, the arbitration or the, I keep saying arbitration the arbitrage uh, was quite uh, generous. I think it was 32% at one point. So basically uh, by buying Gold Canyon, you had pretty much a guaranteed return of 30 plus percent because immediately when the paperwork went through, uh, those shares would be converted to first mining finance and they were cheaper by just buying Gold Canyon at the time. Now you also got uh, as a spinoff some shares in Irving Resources. Now, Irving Resources uh, was just, you know, for every share you owned, you would have, say, 0.03 or something like that shares of this Irving Resources, which I didn't even bother to look at because it was just a bonus. I didn't pay for it. It was sort of a freebie and it was too small of a holding for me to even care at the time. Now, doing some little bit of research just very fast, just before this video, which was going to be about something else, I noticed that I had a 10 bagger in my hand. Uh, the stock went from 11 cents to 130, I think. So yeah, that's even more than a 10 bagger. And now it's down to like 85 cents or something like that, something crazy. Right now it's sitting at, I think, at a seven, an eight bagger, something like that, uh, which is not exciting because I don't own enough of it uh, and I didn't even think to buy it because it, it's just something that literally one day appeared on their portfolio and it was always just something so small and I was like, yeah, it doesn't even pay for me to sell this position because then I'm going to have to pay the fees to sell it, so let's just let it run and whatever. Now, something that I do have as a habit, which I think I need to expand on and or break, so to speak, is that I always look at the row that shows the percentage returns. Now, because I didn't really buy this stock, the percentage returns was always like zero or there was a glitch in the system because I didn't pay for the shares initially and it would show something ridiculous like 10,000%, which I don't know how they figure you know, percentage from zero dollars invested. But hey, that's, I just got used to ignoring Irving resources and just going on to the next item to, to see how my stocks were doing. And it turns out that they're really interesting. They have a, a, a few projects in Africa and Japan. Now, I haven't even looked at their Africa stuff. I don't even know where in Africa they have uh, their projects because I literally just found, found out about this like 30 minutes ago. And so uh, it, it seems like the, the Japan uh, project is actually really promising. They have somebody at the helm, which is uh, a Japanese woman, but also has experience with uh, resource companies in Canada. So that's interesting to me when you go over to a, a country with such difficult culture like Japan, uh, then you should really have somebody who knows what they're doing, somebody that's not going to come in and first five minutes is going to, you know, like not get along with people or get the wrong cultural message across and just spoil all possible deals, right? Uh, so yeah, Irving Resources, uh, take a look at it. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Uh, I'm actually becoming more and more interested, but this is just something that happened. You know, I had a 10 bagger in my hand and it's, it's now a, a seven or eight bagger. I'm probably going to buy a little bit more just because I think it's a funny story that, you know, like the one thing that everybody dreams about in this business, which is to have a 10 bagger. Like, let's be honest, this, this is what it's all about. Like you want to buy something 
on the cheap and just have it go up tenfold and just go crazy, right? Uh, it just happened, I didn't even notice it. So beware, okay? Beware of the little things that are in your portfolio that you're not really noticing. Uh, just because it might be a good story, not that it's going to make you rich or anything like that, but also beware of people who claim to have, you know, all these 10 baggers and, uh, just these really, really impossible gains. I mean, they're not impossible, but when you see a, a 10 bagger, your natural reaction is to go back in your brain and think, okay. 10 bagger. Wow. Okay. What would have happened if I had thrown in 10 grand in that 10 bagger? And then you're thinking, oh, nice. What if I had thrown in 100K in that 10 bagger? It's like a million bucks, right? And so just be careful with that line of thought because it might be just such a small position that it didn't really make any difference in their net worth like it didn't really move my net worth at all right <laughs> just a little bit more like i don't know uh, a, a nice fancy dinner would cost that's how much i made so anyway uh if you like this video hit like and subscribe if you've ever had a 10 bagger please write down here about your experience i'd love to hear about it uh that this is my experience with missing a 10 bagger months ago and now holding on to a 7.7 .7 bagger is that a thing I, I don't know maybe i'm gonna start saying that 7.7 .7 is really where it's at forget about the 10 bagger <laughs> all right hit like and subscribe there's a lot more coming your way take care